CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Um, uh, welcome to the second broadcast. Uh, this one is going to be everything you need to know about plant-based fitness nutrition. So uh, it's going to be very important for you to send me in your questions because the more questions I have, the more I can answer and we can cover in this. Remember, this is only about a 20 to 30 minute uh, broadcast. So I'll try to get as many questions as I can. Uh, I'm going to go over some topics, but the, uh, feel free uh, to shoot me your questions if you have any, and uh, we'll try to tackle them as we go. So uh, let's talk about the top three nutrition items that a lot of people who are saying, hey, I just turned plant-based or I'm considering going plant-based. How do I gain muscle and stay fit and lean on a plant-based diet? Um, so three of the big nutritional questions that most people ask are where do you get your protein, obviously, uh, how about omega-3s? How can I get and stay efficient with my omega-3s and why that's important for uh, fitness nutrition and vitamin B12? Okay, so first off, I want to pose a question. For those of you who are not yet plant-based or are considering to go plant-based, um, you know, one of the questions that I want to ask you is what is it you think you're getting from eating animal products like milk and eggs and meat and chicken and fish. What is it you think you're getting nutritionally that you think you can't get from plants? Because right now, what I just wanna make perfectly clear is uh, we live in the animal kingdom. All the animals and human beings included are in the animal kingdom. And they're what's <laughs> basically down the nutritional ladder, we're at the bottom. We're consumers of nutrients. Plants are producers or makers of nutrients. So almost all of the vitamins, um, all your minerals, they're absorbed up through the soil or taken from the air and converted. Um, all the essential amino acids are made by plants. All the essential fatty acids are made by plants. Some microbes can make it on their own too, but that's not, that's not the animal kingdom. Uh, I don't see anybody sitting down to uh, a big full of uh, microbes for breakfast in the morning. This doesn't happen. So as far as our food intake is concerned, all essential amino acids are made by plants. All essential fatty acids made by plants. Animals don't make these. That's why they're called essential because it's essential for us to get them from our food, from the nutrients from our food. That's why vitamins and minerals are essential. We need them for our body's processes. Animals don't make them. That includes cows, chickens, fish, any of them. They don't make them, they consume them. And where do they get them from? Plants. Planters are the makers of nutrients. Animals are consumers of nutrients. So why are we taking all these plant source nutrients and feeding them to animals and then killing the animal and then taking those plant-based nutrients out of the animal? That's just silly. That's like me going to you and saying, hey, I see you went out and made money. I am going to kill you, steal your money instead of just going and get out, going out and getting a job and making my own money. That's not right. It's not fair. And you wouldn't do that to anybody else. So why are we doing it to the animals in the animal kingdom? They don't make the nutrients. So go out and make your own money and don't kill and steal it from people and go out and get your own nutrients from plants, just like every other animal does. Um, so that's fair. Now, people say, what about protein and quality of protein? All right, uh, one of the first things they say is, uh, animal products are complete protein versus plant proteins, which are not complete. And this is an absolute fallacy. This is totally incorrect. It's based on bad knowledge from way years ago. It's been disproven long, long ago. But it's still hanging out there as a myth. Um, what there are are different levels of each amino acid. So it's called amino acid profile. So you have one high, one low, one all over the board. Plants pretty much mimic what our bodies needs as far as amino acid profiles. What they tend to be lower in is certain amino acids uh, called methionine, cysteine, essential, non-essential amino acids. These amino acids, they found that when you consume them in higher amounts can yield uh, a higher risk for heart attack, stroke, significantly increased risk for heart attack and stroke. 
So you actually want lower amounts of those amino acids. What they were doing is looking at um, animal proteins, assuming that's the best source of protein, and see that their amino acids are higher in these sulfur-based amino acids, and um, therefore that's probably what we should be eating, when it's totally wrong. What we should be eating are plants because they're lower in those and then um, could impact our, our health much less. I want you to go ahead and look up something for me. Just type in in Google, methionine dependent cancers. What you're gonna see is some studies pop up that show that you can actually wipe out these cancers completely, about 16 to 19 different forms of cancers completely just by starving them of methionine. So what happens when you're eating these animal products that are real high in methionine instead of the plant products that are lower in methionine, you're getting all this food to feed cancer cells. Now, if that's what you think is a good amino acid profile, well, it's good for cancer cells, but how about feeding your own cells? That's what you really want to do. So yes, all plants are complete amino acid profiles. Actually, the only two things that I know of that are incomplete proteins in the protein family are gelatin and, um, and uh, what's the, the big... Uh, Bone marrow obviously is one of them. So bone broth is an incomplete protein and collagen. Collagen is an incomplete protein. And these are two of the hot supplements out there right now. And they're an incomplete protein. They're totally missing an essential amino acid, in this case, tryptophan. So you're not getting that. Basically, you cannot live on those proteins uh, as they're completely deficient of an essential amino acid. All right, so that's the, um, and, and also methionine and cysteine, they can back convert to each other. Cysteine converts also to homocysteine, and you can find homocysteine turns into a very crystalline structure that can damage arteries. This sets up the scenario for placking, which leads to heart attacks and stroke. So again, if you're eating these animal proteins high in cysteine, you're running a higher risk of heart attacks. It was an amazing study they did, um, generational study. They looked at a real big study and they looked at, okay, what if we just look at the highest amounts of protein intake, both in animal products and in just plant products and vegetarians, vegans, and versus um, uh, omnivore diets. Well, they found that uh, those eating the highest amount of protein in, in their diet had a 75% uh, all-cause mortality risk increase, 75% increased risk of dying. Now, they had a 400% increased risk of dying from cancer. And that's amazing. And again, remember that meth methionine, real high in animal products. And if you're heavily feeding methionine, you can be feeding cancer cells, causing them to grow and, and, and take over your body and, and eventually possibly die from them. So. Plant proteins are a better protein for your health, but how about for muscle? Well, the next thing they, they look at is, okay, well then branch chains, right? That's why everybody is on the whey protein bandwagon because branch chain amino acids, well, you can definitely get branch chain amino acids from plant proteins just like you can any other. So branch chains, the three branch chains, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, these are essential amino acids. And remember, plants have all the essential amino acids. If you're an athlete, you're probably going to need more because you're burning through. You need more for healing and repairing and stuff like that. If you're um, not an athlete, just for maintenance purposes, you don't need that. So, yes, leucine is important. Leucine is one of the most anabolic amino acids of all, which is why we um, promote and sell um, branched chain amino acids. Uh, the research out there has shown that if you take actually essential amino acids in the form of branch chains, and actually add them to your proteins, you could increase, um, in one study showed an increase of muscle protein synthesis by up to 33%. So MPS or muscle protein synthesis is your body's ability to take the protein that you eat and turn it into the muscle that you um, form. So structural proteins and dietary proteins, you need to convert them to that. So branch chains definitely can help accelerate that process so that you can build more muscle, stay lean, add more muscle, which then will help you keep you lean because a muscle burns a lot of calories. Um, so can you get them from, from plants? Of course you can. They're in, in any uh, protein that is a complete protein and all plant proteins are complete protein, but by simply adding a little bit more and you can get those from plant sources as well. Um, so omega-3s. Omega-3s are important. A lot of, a lot of people actually don't 
realize that omega-3s are not, not just good for heart health and brain health and joint function, um, but they're actually very important for muscle protein synthesis. So this is interesting in that um, muscle protein synthesis can be increased just by increasing your omega-3s up to 25%. And that's pretty incredible. Omega-3s increasing muscle protein synthesis almost as much as good old branched chain amino acids. That's why it's so important. Now, which one of those omega-3s? That's a good question. It seems that EPA is, is shown in at least one study to increase muscle protein synthesis and decrease muscle degradation or catabolism, the body tearing down or losing muscle. So it prevents the loss of muscle while increasing the gaining of muscle. This is the ideal scenario you want if you're looking to put on some strength, add some muscle, lower your body fat. So this is ideal. So EPA is a vitally important for athletes and what are the best sources of plant-based EPA? So there is two forms of omega-3s, preformed, which is means they're already made in their final states, which is EPA, and there are precursors. Um, so plants have a lot of ALA. ALA is a precursor. And all right, so I'm going to run a couple studies by you, and I'm going to tease this because I'm going to cover omega-3s on a different topic. Uh, um, video and we'll go into a deeper dive on this but i've got some mind-blowing research that actually shows plants are a better source of omega-3s than fish oil or algae oil now i know a lot of vegans out there are taking algae oil because they have those preformed dha and epa but once you hear what i have as far as research you're going to be blown away that what we should be taking all along was the APA SDA that is found highly in plant sources. And what is the best source known on this planet of ALA and SDA combined? And that's ahi flower. And that's why I choose it and why it won the uh, best supplement of the year in 2016. Um, its conversion rate to EPA was shown in published human research intracellular inside the cells to be 400% more than flax uh, no SDA and chia or flax either. So it's the richest source of ALA and SDA of any plant known right now. Now, there's an amazing study. It's the Adventist Health Study that showed um, that vegans actually had a higher proportion of total omega-3 fatty acids uh, compared to non-vegetarians. Higher omega-3s through their diet. Now, how's that possible? Well, I'll get to that in a second. Another study called the Norfolk Epic Cohort Study this is an amazing one. Look this one up. It had uh, it showed vegans had higher DHA levels than those consuming meat or fish. How is that possible? It's all about the conversion. You know, the a lot of the research and what you hear out of there is, oh, ALA doesn't convert to DHA. DHA, you know, is you got to get it from from sources in its preformed state like algae or fish. And the research I'm going to show you is going to blow that out of the water. You've been right all along. We've been right all along as vegetarians and vegans that we should be getting our omega three nutrition directly from plants. Once you see this research, it's going to <laughs> it's exciting. I'm I'm very excited to be the first person once again to bring this research together in a cumulative way and paint a picture for you that is going to change what we thought we know about omega-3 metabolism. There's a bunch of more nutrients that I want to go over before we end this too. So let's cut to that. So there's a there's a big thing going out there on um, on social media and the internet, seven nutrients that you can't get from plants. Okay, let's just go ahead and debunk all of them, one by one, down the list. So vitamin B12, fall. we now know that you can get vitamin B12 from plants. No, and I, I put that uh, in, in a phrase because all vitamin B12 comes from bacteria. It does not come from animals and it does not come from plants but this B12 is actually found inside the plant. Um, and, and that's just like the animals. The animals consume the bacteria and then the bacteria has the B12 and that's how they get it when you're eating animal products. The plants now, we know now have a symbiotic relationship. There are certain plants that actually pull up the uh, microbes from the soil and house the um, bacteria inside of the plant.
So when you consume the whole plant, like in lentine, which is the first plant to be commercially available with bioactive, clinically proven B12 in it. And that's amazing because now we have a true whole food, whole plant source of B12. The second nutrient can't get from plants, right? Cholecalciferol, or more commonly known as vitamin D3. All right, so first off, we all know you go outside and stand in the sun, your body can produce its own vitamin D3 because vitamin D3 is actually not a vitamin. It's a hormone. It was erroneously called and it's stuck. So instead of calling it hormone D3, we call it vitamin D3 and it's not really a vitamin. Um, but we now know there is actually a plant, not a lichen, which is not really in the plant kingdom, it is more in the fungi kingdom, but this is actual real plant producing real cholecalciferol, the vitamin D3 in its true state. So this is an amazing breakthrough. We're gonna be one of the first companies out there to be launching this brand new plant. It's gonna be organic. So now you get a plant source, real plant source of organic D3. And we're gonna be bringing that to you real soon. Depends on when you see this video, it may be already available by the time you watch this video, but stay close for that. So two of them down. Vitamin B12 doesn't come from plants. <clears throat> uh, uh, vitamin D3 can't come from plants. <clears throat> All right, two of those knocked down, dragged out, they're gone, down for the count. DHA, you can't get from plants. Now here's the interesting thing. <laughs> Um, so we now know the research shows that um, ALA is a unidirectional in its conversion rate. And when you hear the research that I'm going to be talking about, I know I'll keep teasing you on this one, but it's exciting. It's worth sticking around for in my omega-3 announcement, because once you hear this research, it's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to dramatically shift what we thought we knew about omega-3s. It actually down-regulates all the way down to DHA. With the new research, I'm gonna show you that there's actually even no need whatsoever to take DHA as a supplement. Ooh, did he just say that? Oh my God, oh my God. Wait till you see the research. You judge for yourself. I'm gonna lay out the research and you see if you can connect the dots and come to the same conclusions that I did. And just remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> All right, so DHA, that's false. Body converts uh, ALA all the way down to DHA, not a problem, and I'll show you the research. Next up is creatine. You can't get that from plants. So what? We get it just like every other animal does from ourselves. We make it from other nutrients. We make it in our own body. No need to take creatine. Our body produces all of its own. Work out hard, you'll create even more as long as you are getting the right nutrient values from your plants your body can make its own creatine. So no need to get it from plants. Same with carnosine. You know, everybody says, oh, you can't get beta alanine. Look, our body makes its own carnosine from non-essential amino acids. So no need to do it. Our body makes its own just like every other animal on the planet. How many animals you out there see taking beta alanine supplements? Zero, good reason. They make their own just like we do. Don't need it. Okay, taurine. Again, our body makes its own. It's a non-essential amino acid. So non-essential amino acids are amino acids that our body can take using building blocks like essential amino acids, tear them apart, recombine them, and form. Form them into. Oh, there we go. Last picture, just for a second. Okay, our body can take um, essential amino acids and recombine them to form non-essential amino acids. No need to take taurine. Our body makes its own. And remember, taurine, like methionine and cysteine, is a sulfur amino acid. So the higher you consume in sulfur amino acids, you run higher risks based on recent research, higher risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, other diseases. It's out there. Just look up sulfur amino acids on Google. Again, I'm giving you some information. Look it up. Verify it by the research that's out there. I'm not telling you anything different than what's already published in the research. Um, hem iron, heme iron. So this is number seven. So B12, D3, DHA, false. 
uh, creatine, carnosine, taurine. Our body makes our own. Taurine. Our body makes its own. No need to get it. We can recombine it from the foods that we eat. And the last one, heme iron. Heme iron is found in meat, red meat specifically, but it's found in, in animal products. Heme iron oxidizes. Just think of it as metal. If you take a piece of iron and leave it outside, what will happen? It'll rust. That's oxidation. Oxidation is oxygen-free radicals actually starting to eat up and tear up and break up and oxidize that iron. Well, the same thing happens in here if it's heme iron. What the beautiful thing that plants have done is combined, you're getting the iron from plants in its natural state, non-heme iron, and it doesn't oxidize. Why? Because it's surrounded normally by lots of antioxidants. Plants have phytonutrients, polyphenols, antioxidants, all these different chemicals that protect it from oxidizing. When you oxidize iron, it starts to rub all that rusty oxidation and can cause damage to our arteries. As a matter of fact, one study shows that heme iron can increase the risk of suffering a heart attack by around 57%. You want to increase risk of death? Go ahead, consume all that heme iron you want. You'll die a lot sooner. So if you want a long lasting, healthy body, just consume plenty of that, that uh, plant-based iron and you'll have the muscle gains that you need, that blood flow that you need, that red blood cell count that you need from the iron, all in plants. Look, just one scoop of clean green protein has about 60 up to 75% of the iron that your body needs for an entire day. One scoop of clean green protein. I mean, that's nothing. Spinach, kale, the dark greens, these are all really high in, in iron. Um, steam them, make sure you get those nutrients out of them too. So blowing away all these nutritional myths that you need any animal product at all. I've been vegan for 35 years nothing but plants. I'm a natural bodybuilding champion. The trophies are behind me. And um, what I like to do is show people, hey, you don't have to destroy your body. You don't have to increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, and diabetes, and all these nasty things. You can live a healthy, happy, strong, long life by consuming plants and you can get the fitness gains you want to as well. So I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Love to hear any questions that you may have. And let me again, uh, let me know again, uh, if there's any other topics that you'd like for me to cover, we can cover them on the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me. Till the next time, peace, love, and plants.